Salutations one and all, and if you're watching uh, today's particular vlog, it means that you're interested in learning about what is in a funding application. A very, very exciting and very, very big and very, very general question. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the first thing that I have to say about it is that a lot of different things are in a funding application. Um, I have chosen the Creative Scotland Open Project grant form to go through as a kind of this is the main big public one, but as we've already talked about a little bit and we'll explore over the course of the summer, there are so many different types of funds out there and so many different types of forms and so many different types of circumstances around that. But as I said, we're going to start with the big one. Um, if you're watching this in Scotland, this is the uh, Creative Scotland Government arts funding grant for you. Um, if you're in England, that'll be the Arts Council. If you're in Wales, it'll be Arts Council Wales. And if you're in various other countries, there may or may not be a similar sort of system. Um, but anyway, we're going to start with this form. And straight away, I'm going to warn you, it's pretty thick. This is all of the pages of this form that are actually um, useful where they actually ask you questions on. There is also a kind of cover page on it and a kind of advice page which I didn't print but you can go find and check out. Um, not all forms are this big and this long. It is a huge question of should it be, should it not be in terms of how big this form is and the conversations that we've had in this sector around it. I'm going to go through it, make it fairly easy and simple and hopefully you'll feel a lot better at the end of it because what this form definitely does do is have all the information that any funding application will ask for. And before anybody asks, was it really the most environmentally clever thing for me to do printing out all of this paper? Probably not, but A, I wanted to be able to demonstrate to you like quite what we're talking about when we're talking about this form and also all of this is scrap paper so it's, it's all paper that in a way is being recycled anyway. But anyway, let's get to the point. So, the first thing that you get asked on this form, as you may ask on very different forms, is various uh, conditions around actually being able to apply for a fund like this. Things like, do you object to receiving national lottery funding? Things like, do you hold a UK bank account? Um, the other thing worth saying on this particular form is that this is the open project form for organisations. There is a separate one for individuals that was not available as a printout and therefore you get the organisations one instead. But on organisations one, it will probably ask things like, um, do you have two directors who are part of your organisation who aren't directly related to each other? Various different kind of eligibility questions like that, which, as anyone will know from filling out any form, should be fairly easy to go through. Then we get into who the applicant actually is. Again, this is pretty basic stuff. Name, address, postcode, email... Uh, if you're a company, what your kind of registered details are. Um, if you're an individual, perhaps what kind of artist you are and therefore are you eligible for the type of support that they're looking to give. If it's a location specific fund, it might be what's your postcode. So just be conscious of that. And similarly here, what legal type of organisation are you? Uh, just flipping through this. Project summary. Now's when we get into actually talking about whatever the thing is that is being funded. This section, as you can imagine, is entirely dedicated to a really basic understanding of, right, what's the thing you want the money for? Um, this is really good in that this version of the form has a 200 word maximum, which means you're not going completely over the top in exploring what this is. There are plenty more questions that kind of go into more specific detail that will allow you to do that. Um, but this 200 word maximum just allows you to get right to the point and focus on the super important information. Similarly, there's a funding question in terms of how much money you're asking for. That's just a really basic number and a project start date that again is designed to just be the date. Um, as with any funding application, you need to leave a bit of time pre the project starting to allow for a decision to come back. If you don't factor that into your project start date, odds are you're not going to get selected um, because any fund like this isn't able to uh, fund any kind of arts work that's already get start been started. So definitely make sure that you don't get tripped up by that because it can be a confusing one. With Creative Scotland, the best kind of rule of thumb is eight weeks before the project start date at the minimum. And if it's most other forms, it'll probably be 12 weeks, but again, they will outline that in their own separate processy bits. Uh, when do you expect the project to end? 
where will your project take place, which is particularly important if it's a country specific form and it's like, this is the national area it's going to happen in. Which art form? Again, very important. I think we're making good progress here. Okay, project details. So this is where we go into a little bit more depth as to exactly what it is that you are asking for with the money. So this 1A, um, which is a 600 word maximum, what do you want to do with uh, your project or activity? What is the artistic creative idea? What will it involve? Why do you wish to do it now? Again, it's, it's kind of just going a step further beyond that initial what's the thing question. Um, here's another 600 word question. What do you plan to achieve by doing it? Um, and another one down here, what are the artistic and or creative skills and experience that you have that will help you deliver the project? Again, talking about your own expertise and your own ability to deliver it as much as here's what I'm doing and here's why it's important to do it. Um, this is 300 words dedicated to what is your approach to equality, diversity and inclusion and environmental sustainability. Again, with so many of these different funding applications, there are... Uh, conditions and targets that the funders are hoping to match and kind of secure in the projects and this is a really good opportunity to demonstrate this is how we are helping you achieve your goals as well as you helping us achieve our goals. So make sure you have a think about that when you're going into putting this form together. Obviously with this it's EDI and environmental sustainability but with various other forms it might be various different things. Now, I'm not quite sure what happened on the document here, but this is supposed to be a kind of uh, project table with funding and where it's coming from. Again, this is a tricky thing to talk about. Sometimes it's a good idea to be able to say, this is where I definitely have a source of money coming from that is definitely going to be included in part of this project. Um, that won't always be the case. It depends on the fun. It's just something to be aware of if you're applying funding for a project. What project, what other funds have you applied for for the same project? And then also, are there any other places where you can, uh, where you can say it's in-kind support and it's non-monetary support, but it's still very, very useful to have? Um, many of the other questions here are exploring the kind of strength and benefit of the project. So this 2B question is who else will benefit from your project and activity? Uh, how will your activity promote equality and diversity and make it more accessible and inclusive? And again, it touches on the environmentally sustain blah, environmental sustainability here. Again, see it more as this is the description and this is where you go into a bit more depth on how it actually happens. Um, straight the plans to achieve the project. Um, how's the project getting managed? Uh, what skills and experience do you have to manage this project? Basically, another version of can you actually do the thing you're asking for the money for? Uh, how will those responsible for managing the project actually do it? Uh, how will the partnerships be managed? So if you're working on a project and you're involving other partner organizations or other individuals, as much detail as you can list as possible as to who they are and their agreement to be part of the project and what they're doing and how it's happening. Just give a bit more impression that what you're doing is more organized rather than, ugh, we came up with this as a fun thing to do and that sort of that. Uh, timelines, knowing when this project is definitely starting and when this project is definitely ending is very important so that the project doesn't just run on and on and on and on and on till the end of time, um, which won't be useful for anybody, including possibly your own sanity. Um, what is your approach to equality, diversity and inclusion? What is your approach to environment and sustainability? In both those questions asking in the project management plan. So again, kind of the same question, but formatting it specifically to fit this particular part of the process. Uh, risk. What could go wrong? And why will it go wrong? And how could it go wrong? Outline it, know it, be honest with it. There's no such thing as a kind of this project is a surefire thing and this is a perfect project to run. So embrace that and go with that and feel okay about that. Um, this is a monitoring and evaluation section. How are you going to know if your project has been a success? And this is a, well, this is only for 15, over 15,000. But if you are applying for more than 15,000 pounds, there's a 600 word maximum where you go through that in a bit more depth and detail. Financial management, very much a lot of the same thing in terms of What's happening with the budget and how are you managing that? Um, how have you calculated the costs? How have you arrived at the numbers for your budget and where have they come from? And then this is a table in terms of the number of people that you're going to access and engage with, including artists, participants, audience, uh, online audience, readers, viewers, listeners, how many number of performances or days of the exhibition are going to take place. And obviously, depending on the project, this will be easier to calculate for some than for others. 
And then here is a budget summary, a project cost, a full detail thing broken down by category to give you a sense of um, this is the vague category that each of these costs go into. Uh, supporting materials in terms of have you made sure that you've also attached all of these other things along with the application form. And there's quite a lot there depending on exactly what you're doing. A terms and conditions apply that's pretty standard. And a please sign the thing and date the thing and tell us who you are and why you're important. Um, that was my very, very quick run through for, through it. Obviously, there's a lot more detail around it, and you can get in contact directly with Creative Scotland for any specific questions that you have on any of the particulars around uh, your project and how it kind of, the bespoke challenges and issues that you have as it comes to the form. There's also, if you go to the Open Funds for Individuals aspects page thing of the Creative Scotland website, you will find an 11 minute 53 overview of the fund uh, video that you can watch and you'll also find a 40 minute and a half walkthrough. And keen to end this video before this video ends up being longer than the video that you can go and watch in Creative Scotland, I'm going to say thank you so much for listening and look forward to seeing you on the next one.